Okay, so the next step we're gonna talk about is making the icon template. Now, you can see here on my screen, I have this section over here, which is called the icon template. Now, these um, make up different types of markups that we're gonna look at. Now, the templated icons that I use since I work in the security business, I have a bunch of devices that we place on drawings that we've made icons for. So for example, a camera or a card reader, uh, if you're an electrical, you'd have like electrical boxes, you'd have different things or different icons for different trades. Now, I'm gonna open up this really quick. This is my master icon tool list. So you can see just kind of how kind of grand the tool chest that I have built looks right here. And you can see kind of how I laid this out on a very large PDF. Now I'm gonna talk about this on a smaller example. And what we're gonna talk about here is how to make this template icon. So what I have here is I have a text box and I have an actual box. You can go over on the markups tab here. So I have a rectangle and a text box. Now, the reason why, um, before we get started here, I wanna talk about when you're building templates, we're gonna talk about snapshots versus groups. So the first off, why would you have a group and why would you use the snapshot tool when you're making icons? Well, for a group, the group is typically for, if you're gonna select both of these items here, and I'm gonna just right click so you can see it and hit group, which is also control G. If your drawings are always in scale, they're always eighth inch equals one foot, they're always say quarter inch equals one foot, there's always a legitimate scale that you're working in, say architectural, Then and then you want this icon to be able to be changed or you just like the fact of using groups, go for it, it works great. The only problem what happens with groups is when you have to add these icons to a tool chest and then they're set to scale and the drawing say, for example, gets really small and you have to calibrate the scale on a drawing, I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit here to maybe zero. Let's see what that does. Makes it super, super small. So let's go up maybe to eight. Let's see what that happens there. Okay, so you're starting to see what happens. So when you have a group and the scale, when the auto scale feature kicks in on Bluebeam, sometimes it can take that text box and stack, stack those icons above each other, right? Which makes it kind of cumbersome. Now, if you're always working in the quarter inch or uh, within the, the correct scale, say eighth inch equals one foot, you really don't have to worry about those icons getting too small because you're working within the scale. The reason why I use snapshots or the purpose of snapshots is it can move up and down and stay, um, it keep its proper form no matter what scale that you have. So in this case, I'm gonna just create a snapshot and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna add this to my, my tools. Now there it is again. And then we're gonna set the same scale just like we did previously, let's say 08. And now you can see that if I put a snapshot on there, it's gonna hold its vector data exactly like the snapshot. So depending on your icons, you can choose to do one or the other. I've chosen on my master tool sets and my master profile that I've, I will show you guys is that everything that I use are predominantly snapshots. Just because a snapshot, you can do things like change the colors, which is fairly simple to do color changes. It's not too difficult to change the color of icons and they're nice and clean and pretty. Um, and you know that if you have to print, they're vectored. Groups also have, are handy in certain instances. I've just gravitated to snapshots because it's yielded a, a much better workflow and I can auto scale and make them as big as small as needed and have them remain nice and clear. So that is, I guess, step one of this video on the difference between groups and snapshots.